Yeah, it was uh, certainly an interesting year, but uh, that, that, that's not unique to us. It was interesting for everybody. But, uh, you know, one of the hardest things that we didn't kind of realize until the end of the season was, you know, we kind of had to stay ready all fall. And so we trained the entire fall, even though we really weren't playing matches. And then you take that season all the way through the spring to April 17th. It was really kind of like playing an eight month season. And, you know, by the end, Heck, even I was exhausted, you know, so I can only imagine where, where the athletes were in terms of just the number of reps and the, and the body, you know, keeping up with it and just trying to stay focused for that long. Honestly, humans aren't made to do that, <laughs> you know, so that length of season to hold it together for that long and, and do as well as we did was super impressive, but it was a huge challenge. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, we, we've got some continuity with uh, Crystal Puente coming back for her uh, third year with us. And uh, she, she's just been an amazing addition. Um, you know, she's she's got a huge heart and huge knowledge of the game and great energy that she brings to the gym. And, you know, she's just one of those people that I can say, hey, can you go to that court and work with them on this? And I'm, I don't I don't really have to plan that. I, she knows her stuff and is super independent, has a great voice in the gym. Uh, so she'll be back as our as our lead assistant. Uh, Jesse Esparza will be back again as well. Uh, he was a volunteer that, uh, you know, he's a really good player, good athlete, and uh, good presence around the gym, really calming presence around the gym, um, and has been really invaluable to us as a helper the last couple of years. So he is now uh, as, as part-time staff, not just volunteer. So really happy to, uh, to reward Jesse with that, but uh, he loves being part of the program and, and our athletes, uh, our athletes really respect him. Um, and then we're bringing on Raul Bernal, um, who, you know, he's been a friend of mine and been in the, he's a really familiar name in the San Antonio volleyball community through high school and club. And, and he was here several years ago uh, as an assistant. So uh, we've been friends ever since I moved down here through the club ranks and uh, just a really good eye for the game, good rapport with the, with the student athletes and uh, will really enhance what we can do with our, uh, with our JV squad and uh, his help with varsity will be really neat as well. It was an amazing addition as well as a manager. Um, that's uh, that. That was the first time we had really had a manager that was you know, brought in to do that. We we specifically went out and recruited her. We knew she was the manager at Brennan High School, and I had huge recommendations from the coaching staff there. And we actually recruited her to come be the manager here, and she was fantastic. So just helps out with so many of the things that honestly take. Uh, from our plate, you know, as coaches, when she's helping set up the meals and, you know, keeping stats on the bench and helping shag and keep score during, during practices and getting the next drill ready. Just those things that, man, if you don't have those, your whole practice and operation can grind, grind to a halt under those, the little minutia things that she does. So, yeah, she's, she's friends with all the girls in the program and she's got a healthy respect from the coaching staff. And yeah, it's, it's been an amazing thing. So we got a big class coming in. Uh, so it's starting with uh, two young ladies from El Paso. Uh, they were very early commits for us. We, uh, we hit it off out there and kind of building a little, uh, little pipeline and connection out to El Paso. Uh, from Chapin High School, Camila Ramirez, who was uh, all city player of the year in her division uh, multiple times. And her teammate, Allison Mata, who is a middle uh, that just gets off the floor really fast and, uh, and has a really heavy arm. Uh, so we're looking for big things from both of them. Uh, Tina Trevino out of uh, Laredo United and Alamo Volleyball Club uh, was a big get for us. You know, she was on Alamo's top club team there for several years, and you know, she's a really familiar name around uh, around the city, both San Antonio and Laredo. And uh, you know, obviously, we graduated Alyssa Marquez, and we graduated. Uh, uh, Amanda <laughs> Esparza, and uh, so we did have some need at uh, defensive specialist, and uh, Tina will be ready to compete right away. Uh, Dalen Mann was a, was another one that we added pretty late. We were so happy that one worked out. Uh, she's a, a really versatile hitter in the front row uh, from Steele High School, and uh, she can play all three positions in the front row, so it really gives us some flexibility there. Um, uh, Julissa uh, Casas from Lee High School here in town, uh, another DS who just plays super hard and was a really natural fit uh, for us in the gym uh, personality wise and just uh, we, we never have to worry about her energy and, uh, and, and where her heart and head is at. Uh, Arden Cantwell, uh, Daisy Cantwell's younger sister, uh, is also coming on. She played at Johnson High School and Force Volleyball Club, just like her sister. So uh, she's coming in as, a, uh, as another DS, really good ball control kid that uh, can hit in a pinch for us if we need her to. So uh, that, that was a really cool pickup uh, to, to get Daisy's sister and have both of them together. 
Um, Giovanni Hansbard was our was our last addition here, uh, so things worked out. Giovanni was a really nice setter for Harlan High School here in San Antonio, and I uh, got rave reviews from her coaches. And she came to a couple open gyms, and we're like, "Oh yeah, definitely." <laughs> she was just a natural fit. Kind of looked like looked like she was a saint already. You know, the first time she walked in the gym, and she's got really good hands, really quick feet. Uh, can't wait to work with her and uh, and uh, continue her development. Uh, Rebecca Bustamante uh, has. Long history in the in the Red River Athletic Conference, not just uh, not just Olu. She's got family that that uh, has played at some of our rivals, and uh, she's a setter from Laredo Alexander, uh, and has uh, played club in San Antonio and Laredo. So, uh, beautiful hands and a, and a volleyball family. And uh, in volleyball, that's kind of a big deal when you come from a vo volleyball family. You know, you kind of grew up with a ball in your hand and just kind of have some some natural know how uh, from that. So excited about Beck as well. Natalie Escueda uh, is, a, is a really neat pickup for us as well from Edison High School. She's our first, uh, first young lady from Edison. Uh, so she's another versatile hitter that uh, can hit outside, right side, or uh, middle. We, we joke about her being kind of Sadie Jr. because uh, she, she kind of plays that same style where she's a little bit undersized but kind of floats in the air. And uh, uh, so we're, we've been joking about that in the gym. So as soon as she picks up a little bit more heat on her arm swing, uh, she could be a pretty nice weapon for us down the road. Yeah, we graduated a, a lot of firepower, but we've got a lot coming back. You know, obviously, uh, Tijana will be a senior this year. Uh, kind of feels like she's been here forever, but we don't want to lose her. We wish we could keep her for a few more years. But uh, so she'll be back for Team All Conference, obviously, and, and a huge force in the middle for us, and, uh, and a great leader. Uh, Sadie's been uh, Sadie Ballesteros, of course, from Southwest High School. Will be a junior this year. Now that feels like that's gone super fast. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, Sadie being a junior, she's been first team all conference two years in a row, and we're planning on that again. Uh, you know, the interesting part with Sadie is what to do with her. You know, she's really versatile and can hit all three positions across the net. So, you know, she's been super successful in the middle. But uh, the idea of moving her to a pin and uh, getting her the ball a little bit more is uh, is really something we're toying with right now. So. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how we use Sadie this year. And, uh, and obviously the, the cool thing about her is she's great with whatever we want to do. So she's, uh, she's just one of those great team players. Um, you know, Cassidy Haller was freshman of the year in the conference last year. So we're expecting big things from her on the right side again. Just gave us a really uh, great presence. You know, after we graduated Rivera, you know, our lefty, we had to bring in a new lefty and, uh, and Cassidy did a great job with that. So uh, we, we're, we're going to need her to step up huge. You know, Daisy had a great season last year. Daisy Cantwell as a freshman, uh, kind of filling in uh, when we had injuries and COVID and, and different things go on. And, and she did a, such an admirable job uh, when she had to fill in for varsity and she's taken over a huge leadership role uh, within the team over the course of the summer. Um, Madeline Strelzik's probably going to be a huge key for us as we graduated, and quite honestly, the, the best setter <laughs> you know, you, um, by, by numbers and, and everything and accomplishment uh, that Olu's ever had. So that's going to be a huge question mark for us. But you know, Maddie got in several matches last year, totally held her own, and, uh, and has shown that uh, she's ready. And, and she's also one that stepped up in her leadership and has joined our leadership training group and has taken on more of an active role in that. So we're excited to see what she can do. Uh, and the last would be, uh, Actually, there's two more uh, in the back row. Um, Alyssa Gallardo uh, was really good in the right back for us, uh, played a lot of serve substitution for us, but lightning fast back there and really stepping into that kind of mentor role as a senior. Um, she'll see the floor a lot more this year in, in regular rotations and uh, will be very valuable back there. And then Megan Montalvo, a freshman last year who we saw a lot of on the floor. She earned a starting spot in the back row and, um, you know, she's really taken on that, that vocal leader role. You know, when we, when we break it down and huddle up, she's the one organizing and calling out the cheers and different stuff like that. So, um, so she's added that to her game in addition to obviously the natural development on the court. We're really excited about this. We were looking at doing something last year, and then obviously everything fell through with COVID. So, you know, getting teams to come all the way south is, is pretty difficult because we're not really on the way to anything else, you know, so in the NAIA, I should say. So it's, it's kind of hard to get uh, teams to come down. So, you know, we put together an event early in the season and kind of promoted it to teams around the country saying, hey, San Antonio is a great place to visit. You'll get some good volleyball. We're doing a barbecue at one of Jason Dady's restaurants. And, you know, so we're, we're trying to make it a whole experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're headed out there. We've got a great relationship with them. We've played them every year, uh, either here or there or both. Uh, they're a really good program, and their their coach has done a wonderful job out there. He's a really good guy that I respect a lot. So we always have really good matches with Whalen, but obviously it's a long trip, so we always say, hey, who's who else is in town? Would they be willing to play us? So Central Christian and Langston are also going to be out there that weekend. As uh, So it's conference matches for them, but they're welcoming us in to play those three teams out there. So it was really, you know, kudos to them for allowing us to do that. That. Sometimes teams are kind of finicky about letting you join a conference thing, but uh, but they were all willing to do it. So we'll get some good matches out there uh, before we move into our conference play. Yeah, it's going to be an entirely different universe from last year when uh, you know a lot of teams sat out, and uh, you know we've uh, we've added some teams to the conference. Uh, Louisiana College and then uh, Xavier, uh, New Orleans is going to be a huge uh, addition to it. Uh, they've made nationals the last few years here, and their coach is a. Uh, you know, kind of a, one of those coaching legends that uh, that you love going up against because uh, it's always a challenge, and you know they're they're going to put uh, quality out there against you. Uh, so that that's going to be a major change. You know, we've, we've got nine teams in the conference now, so we'll play a full conference schedule. Um, you know, we we were fortunate enough and uh, earned it last year. We're going to have to step it up uh, another notch to earn it again this year. There's, you know, before. Uh, the previous year, HT had won it, so I'm sure they're hungry to get back in. And Wiley has a new coach and going to be revitalized up there. And so it's it's going to be a really interesting year in the conference. And not having seen a lot of the teams last year, we really don't know what to expect from a lot of them. So we're we're going to concentrate on what we're doing on our end and uh, and try to put the best we can uh, we can put out there. Absolutely, it's it's a it's a bedrock of of what we do, and and it starts with recruiting. Quite honestly, you know, if uh, if we're getting emails and reaching out to kids, it's one of the first things we ask about is uh, you know the the academic side of things, and you know if, if uh, we we need to see that not just from an academic side, but it, it also speaks to character, you know, because y you can earn the the, the grades. By discipline and character so we feel like that translates onto the floor so we recruit high academic kids to begin with and also that kind of makes our life a little bit easier because normally good academic kids you don't need to be on them quite as much and you know but uh you know the, the culture in our program is one where you know everybody's kind of getting their stuff done in the classroom so you're kind of the weird one if you're not and you know so i believe in positive peer pressure and you'll see it on the road when we're on the bus we have study halls on the bus and we'll do a you know if we play at one o'clock we'll do a study hall for from you know nine in the morning till ten before we leave to go to the the venue and things and and hearing you know the upperclassmen kind of tutor and mentor some of the some of the younger and you know they all have classes together so they'll they'll put together study groups and whatnot and so it's been uh, it's been really neat to be a part of that and kind of encourage that but you know to be honest we haven't had to do all that much you know bring in the right people and put them in the right environment and it it, it kind of handles itself we're there as a backstop but I love that they own it on their own. Yeah, so uh, you know when fans come uh, in the fall, the first thing that's probably going to jump out is the new floor. Uh, we we over the course of the summer, we finally got our floor. I mean, we sanded it down to the boards. I know I, if you don't follow us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook. But uh, we posted pictures of it, literally sanded down to the boards where you, there was no graphics or anything on it, and so they resurfaced it, repainted it. It looks beautiful. It, it really pops. So it, it's really cool, and and it plays really well. Like your, your feet aren't slipping all over the place on the floor and whatnot so it's really cool uh, we're excited for the scoreboard project coming in uh, we don't know what the what the end date is because it's still being manufactured and whatnot but uh, so maybe this season fingers crossed by conference tournament but maybe not uh, but it is on the way and it's been ordered and it's uh, we're really excited for the capabilities that's going to give us with the video board not only during games but we can use that during practice as well and there's some really neat stuff there for training that we can do um, you know, we're, we're going to have uh, an apparel table. Uh, we, we hadn't really done that uh, too terribly much in the past where, you know, when fans come in, we'll have Olu volleyball shirts and gear out there uh, for them to buy in addition to the online team stores that we do. So I know a lot of people had asked about that and we're, we're getting that done. And then I'm actually really excited that uh, our dining services, Startwells has taken over our concessions. So our concessions will be very consistent and, you know, be, uh, be run by a, a company that does dining services on campus. So we'll have a little bit more selection, a little bit more consistency with that for, the, for a better fan experience.